let i will wait for one minute and then i will start thank you come on guys join i am waiting for you to start because today i have an important session with you on the incident response forensic and third intent activity and let's discuss more about like detail but let, let's wait for one minute one more minute and then we'll start hello everyone merry christmas i hope you are doing good and having a great job guys and thank you for your all appreciation for my book my course i came online to discuss more about the other part because it's been a long time for me to came online and discuss more about the other security topics but i have decided to come online every day for at least 10 minutes and tell you about more other information for related to the forensics incident response and threat hunting activity in our previous videos i we have course we have books on sock and seam we talked a lot about on the sock perspective but now we'll talk more on the memory forensics in response and threat hunting activities so first understand like why we need this memory forensic if sock team is monitoring the threats they are detecting the attacks but still memory forensics is required why because sock team identifying the threats based on the network packets device logs they are doing the investigations based on the availability of the log sources or network packets if there is any any attack they look for the network logs network packets device logs and identify if there is any attack in the machine or machine is compromised machine is communicating to bad actors if there is any attacker if the machine user account is compromised if there is a brute force all these different attacks are only based on the device logs but device generates logs based on the auditing policies if you have enabled that those auditing policies in the machine it will generate the logs if there is no device logs if there is no packets sock team will not cannot do anything in that terms we we come as a part of the forensics forensic helps the team to understand about other hidden artifacts which is not available which cannot be present through logs or device network packets due to the unavailability of the network packets network packet contains everything but to store the network packets we require a big storage and company don't prefer to store network packets for a long period of time and it's really hard also to manage these network packets at regular time it's because it take a lot of storage even there is a lot of maintenance required to store the network packets as a sim compliant companies you choose to store the logs for a specific period of time 3 months 6 months 1 year 2 years 6 years depend upon the business and company's requirement but now forensics opens the eyes for the team for the people who don't know what happened with the machine if machine is compromised we can to the forensics to know the hidden artifacts to which ip address it's communicated to what are the user and password stored in the ram because the part which we do the investigation is the ram and in memory forensic what we do we analyze the data stored in the ram and ram contains everything which is been sent from the operating systems to cpu and ram is acting as a bridge between the operating system and the cpu so everything related to the network domains ip addresses user passwords emails activity phishing and you file opening directory relating file everything you can get from the memory and it's a volatile so it's important to get that copy as soon as possible during the incident but it will help us to sock team to identify hidden artifacts yes because sometimes it's not feasible to log everything if you will check the domain request if your machine have been used to access a particular domain name might be you will not get the information if you are not using proxy or sysmon logs but with memory forensics you can identify those hidden artifacts okay now we'll talk like how we can do this memory forensics so there are two options if the machine is alive online or machine is dead if machine is alive then there are some tools which we can use 
and the tools will extract the RAM memory and dump of the memory and will give you for the further investigation. But if the machine is dead already and RAM as I mentioned a volatile memory it will vanish like when the machine reboots. So but in there are some features which we can use like hibernate features when we close the lid of a laptop it goes into the hibernate model. In hibernate mode it save a file. We can use that file for further forensics or there are some other files which might not contains the full memory of the RAM but is a part of it like virtual memory, page zips uh, or virtual memory like swap memory or also we can use a dump of a memory if, if we have available for the particular machine or target machine. Now another topic is another thing is about the virtual machine how we can get the memory dump for the virtual machines. The different vendors like Microsoft, Virtual Box, VMware. The easy way to get the memory from these machines just to get saved or take a snapshot of these machines or suspend these machines and can get copy the same file as a memory for further investigation. And this different VM products provides the features of storing the RAM or memory of that machine in different format like snapshot or suspend by binding the suspension of the particular device VMware machine or as a saved state. It has been also seen with the experienced professional that sometimes hibernate file is not enough because in Windows 8 and Windows 10 it has been observed that when you restart the machine hibernate file becomes zero with the no content in that hibernate file so you cannot use but as I mentioned there is another file dump file or the virtual memory which we can use which contains a part of RAM and can be used. So we just got a comment uh, by the Intijam that plays show practical. So yeah we just the first session this is the first session I am giving a theoretical and every day we will do the session at least for 10 minutes and we will also do practical not the theoretical part but also the practical and we will cover the practical part for the memory forensic incident response and as well for the renting activities based on the log correlations or with the memory process and threat bad actors. Now this is the main part like we are doing the memory forensic right as a part of the incident response team they do the forensics but what is the key point to note from where we are getting this all information there is a name KDBG kernel debugger data block that is used as a reference to get the information about each process each process command used to call that program it also takes the parameter because sometimes when machine got compromised attacker got access to a particular machine they used the call to different project process for example if I compromise compromised a machine I can call CMD and I can use some different parameters to run some commands recall about different groups privileges user privileges doing internal scanning in the network I will use some program so all these parameters will be saved in this process call execution but how we can get the information about the KDBC so there is another information we can find it in the KPCR that is kernel preprocessor control region it contains the address where we can find this KDPG in the previous version of Windows it was a fixed address based on the different operating systems but now as Microsoft is evolving in different operating systems we have Windows XP, we had Vista 7, 8, 10. So evolution making a lot of changes in the operating system level, kernel level as well. So KPCR which is kernel preprocessor control region holds our specific address where we can find the KDVG address and from that we can refer as the pointers to identify the process executions which process executed with, with what commands, what privileges and we can do more analysis on that basis. In the new operating systems it's not based on a specific address for that we have to do some research and that job taken care by the specific forensic tool. They will look for the specific signature to identify the location of the KDVG. Now even once we get the information about the KDVG it look for the e-process or the execution process where provide the information about each process in details 
with the block segments or provides the information about to, toward the tree matrix toward the vad vad is a virtual address descriptor it contains the information about the memory allocated to a process for example if a process is taking part of another memory and it's not supposed to do we can look in the reference of the vad table and can identify the abnormalities and anomalies and can identify the suspicious activities if you have any question guys please let me know and all these activities regarding the virtual memory uh, the ram we will use a open source tool volatility we will i will show you how this tool used to do the forensics with their memory on different operating systems because it has a features to do the forensics on the windows linux and mac as well so in the next coming sessions i will play more practical not the theoretical part because now the topics will become more interesting and we'll talk about the different event code different process executions how we can identify abnormalities based on the process executions process ids and do the forensics what information we can get from the memory we we'll all do the practical part but yes we should be in continue because the 10 minutes we can get easily for everyone available they can look for the video 10 minutes and can learn something because cyber security is a broad term and we have discussed all about the soc and sim perspective now we'll go in depth in understanding and identifying the concepts related to the forensics threat hunting and incident response guys this is the small session a uh, small session so i will come daily online and to give you the details about this topics and with practical understanding as well might we not cover everything but yes eventually we will cover everything in terms of like understanding of building the basics this is just an introduction about this what we are going to do and by tomorrow i will show you some practical as well so have a great day guys merry christmas to everyone if let me know if you have any questions i can help you in that if you don't have any questions i think that you have understand the understood the why we on, came online and I, there's no specific time when we come online but yes i will upload a video or i will come online every day on these topics thank you have a great day guys bye bye take care